banana. Business model is the cheapest fruit in the supermarket. So how did we get here? Banana, Deacon. Banana. Possibly the most important fruit in the world. Oh, this video is not about eating bananas. It's about the history of bananas and a banana company. Let's dive into it. Well, it is estimated that bananas date back as far as 10,000 years in Southeast Asia. But the mass production of bananas started in 1834 and really started exploding in the late 1880s. And when it comes to Chiquita company, it started more than 150 years ago. To be more specific, in 1870. Now the question is how they became widely popular and one of the leading distributor of bananas in the US by just simple banana business? Well, it's not as easy as it seems. It's complicated, but first we need to know how it started. The story began in 1870 when ship captain Lauren Judo Baker purchased 160 bunches of bananas in Jamaica and resold them in Jersey City for a profit of $2 per bunch. Point to be noted here that it was Captain Baker, not me, Captain Arnav. Okay, jokes apart. In 1873, an American railroad developer began to experiment with banana production in Costa Rica. Who was that man? It was Minor Copper Keith. He started growing bananas next to a Costa Rican train road so that it might earn some money for the railroad. And this led him to become involved in the large scale export of bananas to the United States. In 1885, Captain Baker started a partnership with Andy Preston and formed the Boston Fruit Company. Then in March 30, 1899, the United Fruit Company was founded. This company company was the merger of the Boston Fruit Company which was owned by Captain Lauren Joe Baker and Andy Preston with minor kids banana trading enterprises. And this was the modest beginning of what is now known as Chiquita Brands. And from there they turned into commercial property, they started to export and that's when they all started to enjoy them on the supermarket channel. Now the question is how successful the company was or what's their success story. After a year later, in 1900, the United Fruit Company issued its first annual shareholders report. Soon after, they became a dominator in the agriculture banana industry. In 1903, the company got listed on the New York Stock Exchange and became the first company to use refrigeration during open sea transport. They used to own 75% of the market share in the early stages. The United Fruit Company maintained a near monopoly on the banana market although its share had been declining since 1910s. The company had an initial capitalization of almost $11 million and by acquiring more than 20 rival businesses, the company expanded its capitalization to $250 million by 1930 and also became the largest employer in Central America. Another sweet approach was taken by the company in 1940s. In 1944, the company introduced a single greatest marketing campaign called Miss Chiquita with the creation of Chiquita Banana Song for radio. Eat a banana and I've come to say bananas have to ripen in a certain way. And when it was one of the most successful commercial jingles of all time. After the 1950s, the company started experiencing disturbing changes in its business. I mean, it started falling, but I'm not going to talk much about the falls in this video. By the way, here another fact about the United Food Company, which is now known as Chiquita. In 1947, Chiquita had been registered as a trademark, and in 1990, the company officially changed its name to Chiquita Brands International. Now finally, the question is, was Chiquita managed to become a successful business or a monopoly? The simple answer is yes. The company managed to maintain its monopoly on the banana industry of Central and South America, with the majority of its products being sold in the US. By 1930, the company controlled 90% of the banana import business in the United States and was the largest employer in the Central America. And what was the biggest banana farm? Of course, it's Chiquita. Bananas taste the best and are the best for you. But this company didn't have a very innocent past. Rather, it has a very controversial dark history. It's actually darker than you could ever imagine. We found out in the first part of this video that Chiquita became the world's biggest banana brand in history. But in order to do that, they chose the path of blood slavery, exploitation, and military coups. The company exercised extensive economic power over nations like Guatemala, Honduras, Panama, and Colombia. Literally, they used to control lives and deaths of their workers, all in the name of financial gain. Let's talk about some of them. The massacre. On November 12, 1928, the workers of the banana plantations in Colombia went on a strike in response to unfair work conditions of United Fruits. They demanded simple line things such as basic medical care, increased weekly wage, 
uh, payment in cash and six others. This strike became the largest labor movement witnessed in the country till then. But of course, the United Fruit Company denied to make any negotiations and labeled the protesters as communist. The United Fruit Company influenced the US government to send in the military and invade Colombia if the Colombian government do nothing. The Colombian government was also concerned that if they did not respond to the protesters, the US could interfere on their behalf. So in December 1928, the Colombian government sent troops to Cienaga. After giving a five-minute warning to leave, the soldiers positioned their machine guns on the roofs of the low buildings and then opened fire into a dense crowd of workers and their families, including children. The number of deaths from this incident is not fully clear, but some record indicates that 2,000 people died. The workers just wanted to be recognized as employees. And for that reason, this travel step is just disgusting. The Postal and Railway Monopoly As we previously knew from this video that Minor Keith was initially building a railroad in Costa Rica. He expanded the company's transportation in Honduras and Guatemala so that they can ship their products quickly. The company started trying fully control the railway service of Guatemala. In 901, they became the dominator in transportation sector and also the largest company in Guatemala. And the way they took over a country's major sector and started control was not absolutely ideal. Okay, now let's move on to the next story. Used harmful pesticides. The United Fruit Company used Nemagon, a highly toxic pesticide, especially in Guatemala and Honduras, to grow their crops faster and stronger. They used a powerful pesticide with a terrible side effect and thousands of workers became the victim of it. They literally poisoned the people in Central America. Next, the bribery and suicide. In the 1970s, Eli M. Black, the chairman of the United Brands Company and major shareholder in the United Fruits was accused of paying $1.25 million in bribes to Honduran President was all the Lopez to lower taxes on banana exports. Mr. Ely took $1.25 million from a Swiss bank account and turned it over to Honduran officials. A week later, the US Securities and Exchange Commission discovered the bribery and Mr. Ely committed suicide by jumping off a 44 straight building in New York City. Next, Banana Republic. This term of Banana Republic is massively intricate with United Fruits, Honduras, and Guatemala. Generally, Banana Republic means a politically unstable country with an economy dependent upon the export of a single product from natural sources. In this case, it's bananas. But to the people of Honduras and Guatemala, it means something more. Banana Republic indicates the dark history of how the banana companies like Chiquita dominated the cultivation, harvesting, and exportation of bananas and controlled the road, rail, and port of Honduras and Guatemala. Basically, they control the lives of the people. They made money through the sweat and blood of the workers. Set up a new president. Yes, you just saw it right. A banana company deciding who will be the president of Guatemala. In 1950s, Guatemalan revolution was happening. In 1951, Jacobo Arvens became the 25th president of Guatemala and he was the second democratically elected president of Guatemala. At that time of Guatemalan dictator George Uvico, the United Fruit Company gained control of 42% of Guatemala's land and was freed from paying any taxes and import duties. But after Jacobo Arvens took his presidency, he wanted to buy unused lands from the United Fruit Company and distribute them to the farmers and poor citizens. He proposed Degree 900. But the United Fruit Company didn't want to lose their lands. They became alarmed. They felt that President Arvens was challenging it financially and politically. As a result, the company launched a significant anti-communist propaganda campaign against Guatemala in the American press. Dwight Eisenhower, 34th President of the US, also became alarmed by the policy of the Arvens government. But Eisenhower wanted to avoid direct intervention in Guatemala. So he appointed Central Intelligence Agency or CIA to launch a covered operation to remove Arvens from the presidency. In 1952, two years after the election, the CIA was looking for an opposition force to overthrow him. And they found a guy called Carlos Castillo Armas to lead the operation. By the dastardly attack on members of the United States Congress by those who professed to be patriots, in 1954, with the support of the U.S. government, Armas launched an invasion. They may not themselves have been communists, but they had been subjected to the inflammatory influence of communism, which abolished them.
the CIA replaced Arvens with a military dictator, Carlos Armas. This operation was known as Operation PB Success. And that's how a banana company influenced, indirectly influenced, a whole invasion. The business of Chiquita was bananas and from bananas it had built a business empire in the Central American nations of Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica and Panama. But in order to make their empire the immense amount of sacrifice that workers had gone through I think that's just evil, that's just so harsh. The list of the dark sides goes on, like funding terrorists, shipping transported cocaine, etc. But in this video, I only mentioned the most highlighted ones. When I researched these miserable actions, I just got frustrated. I could make one hour long video on this topic, but I try to keep it short. If I missed something very important or told wrong about anything, feel free to tell me in the comment section. So everything we see in this world has a story. Today's topic was Bananas and Chiquita Company. If you watched this video till now and liked it, thank you so much. I love you. Take care. We'll see you soon.